So this sample has a lot of benefits. It's uh, first easy to collect. It's very effective. It's accurate for the detection. Uh, also cost efficient. Well, from welfare friendly for the pigs because it's way less stressful for the pigs. And I will also call it welfare friendly for the humans, for the caretakers, because it's simple and safe to collect the samples. And oroflates can be uh, can detect many pathogens in swine, like uh, PERS, PD, the PD COVID, uh, in my, uh, uh, influenza virus, the um, uh, PCV2, and also African swine fever. Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. And joining us this week is Dr. Xiaomei Yua. Uh, Dr. Yua is a postdoc associated with the University of Minnesota. Dr. Yua, thank you so much for being here on the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you join us. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Give us an introduction, if you would. Yes, thank you, Clinton. Thank you for having me here today. So my name is Yue Xiaomei. Uh, I originally come from China. I have a relatively interdisciplinary background. So I got my bachelor uh, in marketing and master in accounting. And during my master, I was able to be involved in a dairy project to uh, do the cost effective analysis on dairy herds. So after my master, I went to uh, the Netherlands. I got a um, position as a, a PhD in animal health economics and I work a specific disease called bovine viral diarrhea, BVD. So I work with the dairy uh, industry for my PhD and during my PhD it is the time that ne the Netherlands is trying to eliminate BVD from the country. So I had able to uh, deal with a lot of surveillance data on this disease and I also developed my research interest to uh, use the surveillance data to help the the stakeholders, the producers, to make the informed decision. So after I'm, it's my PhD uh, finished in 2022, I moved to the U.S., joined the University of Minnesota as a postdoc uh, with Dr. Cesar Kozo. So he leads uh, another um, project that was a lot of surveillance data called Morrison's One Health Monitoring Project, AMSHIM. So with AMSHIM, I was do, uh, able to do uh, some epidemiology study on um, uh, swan disease. So I'm now two and a half year, relatively new to the industry. Uh, so far, we worked on to develop an early regional occurrence warning tool that some producers are participating with uh, and to understand the PD time to stability, uh, also to estimate the effect of filtration on the PERS occurrence. And also uh, the study that we are going to talk about today, the oral fluid usage in the swan industry in the U.S. It's quite an impressive resume, Xiaomei. We're really excited to have you on the uh, the good team now on the swine side um, and, and apply some of your learnings on surveillance from the bovine side. So let's talk about surveillance. Um, you've spent a lot of time working with oral fluids, obviously a, a sample type that many of us in the pig industry have become familiar with. Talk to us a little about, about oral fluids. Um, uh, give us a little background on it for starting. Yeah, sure. So oral fluid usage in the swine industry started from around seven, uh, 2010 when the VDLs in the U.S. started to offer the oral fluid test. And then since then, it just had a rapid increase in the oral fluid usage in the swine industry, right? And oral fluid is very easy to collect. Uh, so basically, you need to hand the cotton rub uh, in a pen and let it stay for 20 to 30 minutes. After that, you use a um, uh, clean plastic bag to get the fluid, put the wet portion into the bag, and then extract uh, the fluid transfer it to a tube um, and keep it refrigerated. This is the process of the oral fluid sampling, right? So this sample has a lot of benefits. It's uh, first easy to collect, it's very effective, it's accurate for the detection, uh, also cost efficient, well from welfare friendly for the pigs because it's way less stressful for the pigs. And I will also call it welfare friendly for the humans, for the caretakers, because it's simple and safe to collect the samples. And oral fluids can be uh, can detect many pathogens in swine, like uh, PERS, PD, the PD COVID, uh, in my, uh, influenza virus, the um, uh, PCV2, and also African swine fever. 
So we don't have ASF in the U.S. right now. And knock on wood, we won't have it. But we need to be prepared, right? Uh, to prepare for our, uh, for ASF, um, we know that blood for ASF, ASF we want to um, uh not use it that much because blood can be a very high risk for the disease transmission, right? So oral fluid can be an alternative uh, diagnostic specimen for ESF. So uh, as we have conversation with USDA and National Park Board, we understand there is a need to understand, oh, how people are using oral fluid in the U.S. wine industry. So this brings us to the idea of characterize the oral fluid usage, and then uh, to understand meaning three points. Uh, first, the primary usage of oral fluids. Second, the sampling protocol, how people are uh, sampling it, how frequent they sample uh, oral fluids. And third, after the sampling, how the sample is uh, uh, stored, uh, handled before the laboratory submission. Great information. Um, because oral fluids are so easy to collect, it's a large number of people that collect them regularly. Uh, probably thousands of people collect an oral fluid every month in our, just in the United States. And anytime you have that many people collecting the sample, there's going to be variation. So talk to us about what you learned. What was the variation in the, uh, the sampling or the handling procedure? Procedures. Yeah, so variation is also the keyword we got from this this study, actually. So let's talk about uh, two parts. First is the frequency, and second is the sample size, right? So frequency-wise, we see the variation of how frequent these samples are collected. So we have uh, monthly collected uh, in 35 of the respondents, and the respondents here means that we have uh, the survey collected from uh, the vast uh, field personnel, and in total, we have 67 respondents. So 35 of the 67 respondents, they collect oral fluid monthly, and 27% collected weekly, 4% biweekly, and also 2% daily even. And there are another 31% they said other. So it's an open-ended uh, open question. So people mention, oh, uh, they don't uh, sample free like on a routine basis, but they sample uh, based on clinical signs, based on animal movement, or just mention as needed for many reasons, right? And that is the variation in the frequency. Variation in the sample size wise, um, totally uh, we have 60. 8% of the respondents mentioned that they use one rope per two pens. And 21% of the respondent mentioned they use one rope per pen. And for the rest, you know, uh, it could be two ropes per pen, something like that. And uh, for the median number, the number of ropes uh, hand per bar is two ropes. And we have the number of pens sampled per bar at, with a median of six. And this is also an open-ended question. And we see the variation here in the answers. Because um, we do have people mention that, oh, we sample every pens in the bar without mentioning like how many pens. So we could not put the number in it, but we will know, oh, there's even, there should surely be more than six pens in the bar, right? So there are more pens in the bar for those answers. But uh, on the other hand, we also have uh, people mention that they use two ropes uh, separated to six strands and then um, put it in the middle of two pens. So that means six pens, uh, sorry, um, six, uh, six strands for 12 pens. And after they sample the 12 pens, they will just pull the sample together as one oral fluid samples, see? Uh, so this is the variation in practice that we found from this uh, study. Salmonella presents significant challenges to pig health and performance and poses food safety risks to humans. As the first and only vaccine offering live attenuated strains of both Salmonella cholera suis and Typhimurium, Enterosol Salmonella TC from Boringer Ingelheim protects pigs against both serotypes with a single oral dose. Talk to your Boringer Ingelheim representative to learn more. 
Xiaomei, you mentioned talking to USDA about the desire to understand oral fluids potentially for ASF or other foreign animal diseases. Have you had a chance to share the results with USDA or do you know their interpretation of that variation? Do they see that as an acceptable level of variation or is that something that we will have to improve upon if we're going to be allowed to use oral fluids as a part of an ASF surveillance program? Yeah, so after we finish this study, there is a report that we give it out, right? This is uh, uh, funded by uh, National Pork Board, uh, and then we we submit the report. We, As far as I know, uh, we didn't hear much about um, the their reaction on that, but they do uh, want us to publish this study as soon as possible. So people from the field, from the industry, they will understand or where we are and what others doing and how we can, um, maybe the further step will be standardize the oral fluid usage. Yeah, because we don't want to miss it, right? Yeah. We want to, to, to find it if it's here already. What about at the laboratory end, Xiaomei? I know you didn't um, have a part as part of your survey questions about the pooling of oral fluid samples, but did you get any anecdotal feedback from participants about, you know, if they pool at the laboratory or not with their oral fluid samples? So you mean from the laboratory wise, uh, what's the laboratory's uh, opinion on that? Yeah, or the, or the participants, the people that send the samples or the laboratories. Oh, I see. I know what you mean. So uh, we didn't ask her the uh, polling specifically in the survey, but we do have people mentioning the polling, right? And polling many cases is based on many um, factors. First, what is the purpose of this detection? If it's for shipment for uh, between, uh, I mean, at the JDU, then they won't pull it, right? Because they under, they need to understand what is happening within each pen. So we'll just use one row per pen for that um, shipment purpose. And secondly, for monitoring, we do have people mention that they just use one rope per maybe 400 pigs. And then in this case, maybe they didn't mention the polling specifically, but we can see the difference between the purposes here, right? Uh, also, if people want to have a higher detection a sensitivity, if that's the need, then probably they won't poll the, 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 the samples, right? Um, and also, if it is there is clinical science and they already know there is a very high prevalence in the in in the herd, then you know polling may be uh, the practice for them uh, during that period. Very good, Xiaomei. It's excellent information. I really appreciate the work you've done, um, not only to help educate us on on what we can do with oral fluids, but also to help hopefully progress oral fluids as a diagnostic sample uh, that's an opportunity for us if we have to do ASF surveillance. Thank you so much for sharing the information on our show today. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, well, we owe the opportunity to the audience. So for those of you in the audience, thank you so much for listening in. Uh, Dr. Xiaomei definitely did her job of educating us on a, a wonderful technical topic. So I would ask you, the audience, to do your job. If you thought this was interesting or you know somebody who could use this information, forward them this podcast. Share it with them so that they can uh, they can learn from Dr. Xiaomei just as you and I have. Uh, for Dr. Uh, U.S. Xiaomei, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. It's been our pleasure to spend this time with you, and we hope you have a great rest of the day. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health-related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.